Hello ladies and gentlemen, in today's video you'll learn how you can create this animated neomorphic infographic in PowerPoint. We will create one with some colors, as you can see we have this beautiful gradient color and we will create one black and white version as well. So let's get started. So, first of all, if you'd like to learn more about neomorphism and what is the difference between flat design and neomorphism, you can watch this awesome video by Max McKinney, link is in the video description. And next you can check out this awesome tutorial on neomorphic design for PowerPoint presentations by PowerPoint Design One. She has done a wonderful job and you can definitely find some great insights. And next, if you'd like to get inspired on how to use this neomorphic design in real life situations, you can check out this neomorphic PowerPoint template, link is in the video description. And as you can see, you can find some beautiful slides. Alright, so let's jump to our presentation and let's start creating some awesome neomorphic slides. And since so many people have asked me what kind of PowerPoint version I'm using, so let me share it with you. I'm using Microsoft 365 with all of the latest and greatest features such as morph transitions, slide zooms and so on. If you'd like to upgrade your PowerPoint version, Link is in the video description. And by the way, I'm on Windows. I have tried working with PowerPoint on Mac as well. If you'd like to see a comparison video, let me know in the comment section below. Alright, so on this slide, I have collected and placed all of the information that we need to create these two beautiful neomorphic looks. This elevated one and the inset one. Keep in mind that when creating neomorphic designs, you have to use the same color for your shape and for your slide background. As you can see in this case, we're using this uh, beautiful light gray color. And to create neomorphic designs, you have to add uh, a light shadow on one side. Here are the options for the light shadow. And on the other side, we have to add this dark shadow. And here are the options for the dark shadow. And this dark color is actually the same gray color, just a little bit darker. All right, and for the inset version of neomorphic design, we have to use an inside shadow. So I'll show you how that's done. And for the fill itself, we're using a gradient. All right, so don't worry if everything seems to be a little bit confusing. Now we'll do everything together step by step. So let's open up a fresh blank new slide and let's choose a color that we'd like to use for our slide background. So let's just go to fill options. Let's choose solid color and let's go to colors. Let's click more colors and let's find some beautiful colors. And we could create this neomorphic design with just gray colors, but let's make it a little bit more interesting and let's choose a gray color that has a little bit of blue color in it, just to make it more fun. And let me grab the exact gray color that I was using in this example. Okay, so let's select the hex code, let's hit copy, let's get back to our slide. Once again, let's go to slide background, fill options, let's go to more colors, go to custom, and let's paste in the hex code. Skadoosh! Alright, so now let me update these guys on the left side, the slide number, footer, and the logo. We can delete these titles for now. Let's delete the footer and the slide number, because we can copy all of these guys from my previous slide, where I have already converted them to neomorphic style. Let's copy and paste them right here. All right. And by the way, if you'd like to learn more about uh, how to create custom footers, uh, slide numbers, and awesome looking slide layouts, please check out my recent class on Skillshare, how to create a modern PowerPoint template. Link is in the video description. Okay, so now we can go to insert shapes and choose any shape that we want. For example, this beautiful circle. Hold down the shift key to get a perfect circle. Okay, let's enter 11 centimeters for height and width. And let's uh, make sure the circle is in the center of the slide. Let's remove the outline. Okay, and now we have to choose the same color for our circle as the slide background. Okay, so now let's get back to this slide where we can see all of the options for the shadows. And now we'll have to add this dark shadow on the bottom right side. So let me just copy this uh, photo. Let's paste it right here so that we can see all of the options that we have to use. Now let's select our circle and let's go to shadow options and let's choose this option called bottom right. Okay, so first of all we have to use a special color for our shadow. So let me just copy the hex code. 
Let's go to shadow option colors. Shadow color options, I mean, and let's paste in this hex code. Click OK. OK, and now we have to do a few more adjustments. So for the transparency, we have 60. That's good. For the blur, let's use 20 points. And for the distance, let's insert 15. That's beautiful. All right, so the dark shadow is ready. Now we have to take care of the light shadow. Okay, so let me just copy the settings of the light shadow. Let's paste this photo right here. And in PowerPoint, it's not possible to add two shadows to the same shape. So that's why we have to duplicate this shape. Now we'll have to make it white. So as you can see, this dark shadow goes at a 45 degree angle. And the white shadow has to be on the opposite side. So here on the middle, we have 90. Here on the side, 180. And 180 plus 45 is 225. 225, so that's what we have to insert. 225. For the color, let's choose white. And let's drop down the transparency to 25% so that this uh, light shadow pops out a little bit better. Okay, now we can align these two circles to the center and to the middle. And we can group them into one group. And this way we have created our first elevated neomorphic shape. Okay, and you can quickly copy this shape. Make some copies, resize uh, the size, and make some new interesting shapes. And what's awesome, and this is one of the things that I have learned in the PowerPoint Design 1 tutorial, is that you can quickly change this uh, shape to any other shape once you have uh, created it. So that's really useful. All right, and now we can continue working with the second version of Neomorphic Design the inset look. So let me just copy these two photos with some information to our slide. Okay, let's duplicate our elevated circle. Let's uh, move it to the right side. All right, and what's awesome about the inset neomorphic look is that for this look we have to use only one shape. So we can ungroup our circle and delete the white shadow part. And now we'll be working with this circle. So first of all, we have to create an inside shadow. So let's go to shadow options and let's choose this one, inner top left shadow. Okay, so as before, let's choose a different color for our shadow. So this dark gray color. Now let's suggest transparency to 60%. For the blur, let's type in 20. And for the distance, let's use 15 as before. All right. Now, for this uh, white shadow, for this light shadow part, we will be actually creating a gradient fill for our circle. So, uh, let me just adjust the gradient. So, for the first color stop, let's use the same gray color that we use for the background. And for the second color stop, let's use completely white color. And let's make sure that we move the first color stop to the position 50%. And for the gradient direction, let's choose this one with a 45 degree angle. And skadoosh, we have created our inset neomorphic shape. That's awesome. All right, so now I can delete these photos. Let's bring these two guys closer together. So we have the elevated one and the inset one. What's awesome is that we can resize this inset one, bring it on top, and this way we can create this new beautiful hollow shape. That is awesome. Let's group everything together and let's bring everything to the center and middle of the slide. Okay, we could as well achieve the same or similar looking result by inserting this hollow shape from the shape menu. Of course, we'd have to adjust the size and the width of this hollow shape. And by repeating all of the steps necessary to create the elevated look, you would have the same result. But since we have created an elevated and inset circle, let's use them and let's create this uh, beautiful infographic. Let me just copy a couple of text boxes and this icon to save some time. All right, let's make sure that the icon is placed inside of these circles. That's wonderful. And as you can see, there's one more neomorphic look that we can create. This is kind of a button shape. 
So let me show you how we can create it. So first of all, let's just make a copy of this hollow shape. Let's delete this inset shape. We just needed this one. And let's resize it to four centimeters in height and width. And let's just place it above this hollow shape. Okay, I think we can select all of these guys and drag them a little bit below so that there's some space between the titles and the infographic, just like that. All right, and now in order to create this button look, we'll have to add a radial gradient to our small circle. So let's just go to fill options, let's choose gradient. And as you can see, PowerPoint automatically applied the last gradient that we have created for our inset shape. And we'll have to edit this gradient. We'll have to add three color stops. And for the first color, let's use the white. For the second, let's use our background gray color. And for the last stop, let's use our dark shadow color. Okay. So uh, let's make sure that we set the type to radial. Okay, let's change the direction to this one. And as you can see, the shadow is a little bit harsh. So one more trick that we can do, we can go to 3D format settings. And for the top bevel, let's choose this one called round. And let's make sure that we leave zero points for width and height. And skadoosh, ladies and gentlemen, this way we have created this beautiful, soft, nice neomorphic button. Okay. So let's make sure that we set a Montserrat semi-bold font for this bubble, font size 40. And for the font color, let's use our dark shadow color and let's type in one. So now we can group all of these guys into one group, hit Ctrl G to group. And now we will make some copies. Let me just turn on the guides so that we can see where to position our first uh, hollow shape. And by the way, if you'd like to create some awesome guidelines and grids for your PowerPoint presentations, I recommend this free and awesome BrightSlide PowerPoint add-in. Link is in the video description. Right, and now with the help of the Control and Shift key, let me drag some copies in a straight line to the right side. So let's make four copies in total. Okay, so let's select all of these groups with the Shift key and let's make sure that they are distributed horizontally so that we have equal gaps between them that's awesome and now we can even group all of these groups into one big group and align everything to the center so everything looks fine we can ungroup them to separate groups okay and now let me quickly update the numbers and the icons inside of the shapes all right and now we can continue with the animations as you can see my previous slide all of these shapes are flowing up and down. So let me show you how we can create this exact animation. So let's select our first group. Let's go to animation. So let's choose this line animation. Let's make sure that direction is downwards, just like that. Let me zoom in a little bit. And now let's select this red bubble and let's uh, bring it up a little bit. So this is basically the distance that this uh, group will travel up and down. Let's make sure it starts uh, with previous duration, two seconds. And now in the animation effect options, let's make sure we have smooth start and smooth end of one second, auto reverse, and for the timing, let's choose repeat until the end of slide. That's beautiful. All right, and now let's double click the animation painter and paste the same animation to the rest of the groups. And now I'll just add a 0.4 delay to all of these groups. So for the second one, 0.8 and for the last one 0.2 okay now we can check it out on the full screen so congratulations ladies and gentlemen now you know how you can create this black and white neomorphic powerpoint design and next let me show you how we can create the color version so let's just duplicate our last slide hit ctrl d to duplicate and now let's just ungroup all of these groups. Control Shift G to ungroup. Okay, let's ungroup these bubbles on top as well. Control Shift G to ungroup. Okay, so that we can select these uh, buttons individually. And now if we would go to icon fill options, as you can see, the gradient fill option is not available, but we would like to add a gradient fill. So what should we do? So let's just select all of these icons. And let's make sure that we go to graphics format and choose convert to shape. So now all of these icons become shapes. That's awesome. 
And now we can copy this beautiful gradient color from my previous slide. So for this gradient, I'm using two color stops with some custom colors that we have created during my Skillshare class. Okay, so let me just quickly copy this gradient, hit Ctrl Shift C to copy and hit Ctrl Shift V to paste. Just make sure you select all of the shapes that you want with the Shift key and then hit Ctrl Shift V to paste the style. That's awesome. Okay, and now we can group all of these uh, guys uh, back to groups so that we can add animations. Okay, so let me grab the animations from our previous slide. As you can see currently, only the title and subtitle are animated. So let me just grab this animation from the previous slide, double click the animation painter and click everywhere that you want for this floating animation to happen. Let's make sure that we add some uh, delays as before. And we should be pretty much ready to go. Congratulations ladies and gentlemen, now you know how you can create the black and white version and the color version animated neomorphic infographic in PowerPoint. So thank you very much for watching and special thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon. I'll provide these tutorial slides on Patreon and as well special thanks to all of my students on Udemy and Skillshare. Thank you very much. Stay happy, stay healthy and I'll see you on my next video.